Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Gallagher and today we're taking a special look at the Triune Digital's Cinematic LUTs version 4 pack. So this is the fourth Cinematic LUT pack from Triune Digital. And if you don't know, Triune Digital is Film Riot. They make awesome products. They may obviously have an awesome show. So definitely go support them. Um, I'm not sponsored by them in any way, shape, or form. They did send me these to check out. But again, I can say what I want. And uh, we're going to take a peek at them and sort of show you how the LUTs look and what you got going on. So first I want to just say that I'm going to be in DaVinci Resolve, but again, this is going to be the exact same or at least the same concept and look in Premiere Pro and any other editing software that you use. I'm just using it in DaVinci Resolve because it's what I use and it's easy. Um, so of course you either have to install your LUTs or however you use LUTs, whatever your workflow is, you're going to want to go ahead and do that. So in DaVinci Resolve, you have to install them. Um, but anyway, so we have some cool coffee beans uh, stuff. I'm going to move this over, that we did um, on the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G2. So this is the Pro G2. I'm going to make this a little, well, you know, we're going to leave it actually. So yeah, okay, so over here we have our Cinematic uh, LUTs V4 through Trying Digital. And we have VLT LUTs and Cube LUTs. Now VLT LUTs, just so you know, are monitoring LUTs, so they're not going to be something you're going to use in uh, the actual, like, footage here. Uh, so in my case, I'm going to go to the Cubes. Now... One thing that I love that Trying Digital does with every pack is they include a ton of different types of logs, um, including just a standard Rec. 709, and then also utility LUTs. So for instance, if you wanted to convert whatever uh, color space you have, you can do so to 709 if you wanted to use that. I don't know why it's being really weird. Um, uh, if that's what you want to do, you can use the utility LUTs. If not, you can either pick the camera that you want or uh, in my case, what I prefer to do is convert them to 709 uh, in a different way, I'll show you, and then go to the standard and then use the standard. Now, again, we're shooting Black Magic, so we could just go to Black Magic and then start using them, uh, but I'm not going to do that just because, again, I prefer to do it slightly differently. So in my case, I shot in RAW, so I'm gonna go down here to the RAW settings, and then I'm just gonna change the uh, color space, or excuse me, the gamma to uh, extended video, and then I could do, I could change the color space to 709. Um, that way, this is a Rec. 709, and we are in the extended color uh, space. So this is a nice looking image. This looks like what should come out of a camera. Um, and what I'm gonna do is, the reason why I do this is because this way my standard base node here, my clip is in this and I can make any corrections on this first node or first layer if you're in Premiere. And I'm gonna make a new layer or a new node, again, depending on what program you're in, and we're going to add the standard LUTs. So I'm gonna go to the standard one and we can see that this is going to add a look onto all of these in a bunch of different film looks. Now, of course, these are all based on films. So if I go to the little, whoops, if I go to the little um, thing here, we can read them, you can see there's 1917, there's 21 Bridges, uh, Six Underground, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, Ad Astra, Avengers Endgame, Booksmart. I'm not going to go through all these, but you can just see there's a massive amount of them and over a massive range of types of films. So, you know, The Irishman and there's Pet Cemetery. So there's a ton of different looks when it comes to what you have, but uh, I'm just going to kind of go through these and sort of show you what they look like. Um, 1917, 21 Bridges. I like that. That's got a nice warm look. So again, you would go through and you would kind of see what looks good for this project. That Captain Marvel one looks really nice. Let's jump a little bit further down. Once Upon a Time, that looks nice. Jojo Rabbit, that's kind of has... Oh, the Joker actually looks pretty cool. John Wick 3, It 2. It 2 looks nice too. Now, obviously, these are named after films and like this is a coffee commercial. So, uh, you know, it sounds kind of funny. But again, just sort of looking at these, we also have Black and White, The Lighthouse, I think it is. Yeah. Um, you can just see what a difference these make. So I really like the Captain Marvel. So let's add the Captain Marvel. And cool, that adds a nice look to it. So you can see when we turn that on and off, you can see what a nice, again, style this adds. And the great thing is, is if you're using layers properly or nodes properly, you can go back and you can correct your image. So for instance, this is a little too dark for me, so I might pull the brightness up overall, or maybe that's a little too much, um, so I can bring the shadows up a little bit. Um, I could change the white balance to maybe 4,800 if I want to. I'm shooting raw. That's why I can do that. Um, but, you know, you could always go to your color wheels and change, add a different white balance or change whatever you want. 
So that's one of the great things about adding it on a new node or layer is that you have a lot of customization. So let's go to a different clip. Um, we have this kind of cool fade and he's making some espresso. So let's kind of, let's do something fun on here. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna click apply grade so I get that same base. I'm gonna get rid of the LUT. Just this way we have that Rec 709 base grade. Uh, and again, I would correct this. I would brighten this up a tad and I would add a little more contrast. And then we can click Alt S in DaVinci Resolve, add a new node or add a new layer, depending on what you're in. And we can sort of look at what we have. So, ooh, this looks kind of nice. This is Godzilla. Yeah, that looks nice. Cause you can see it's really bringing out some of the, in the shadow, this has that kind of teal and orange feel to it. You're bringing out some of the shadows and some of the, um, you know, the blues down there and the teals, and then obviously the oranges and the skin tone. You can see when we take that off. Um, and the great thing about LUTs is, especially if you add them on new layers, you can control them. So in my case, in DaVinci Resolve, one cool thing, and you could really do this in anything, is just adding, you know, basically changing the opacity. So by changing the opacity to maybe 50%, you can see that now it's adding a slight change and a slight tint you know, if you want to say that overall without completely changing the image. So that's one cool thing about LUTs that I love and is that you have a massive amount of customization when using them. So of course we could do, uh, oh, you don't see the Joker looks like, that looks kind of cool. Um, I kind of like this one's part time in Hollywood on this. And um, I would probably desaturate this a little bit. So like let's pull on the saturation a touch. That looks pretty neat. And then I would add a little more so like that's a pretty cool look so you can see again without the LUT kind of just looks boring with it has that nice and then I can apply this to these other clips so I mean you can see what a difference that LUT makes so this is the the before then the after again it's kind of warm um, but you're still getting cool tones in the shadows a little bit of greens let's see, actually see what that looks like on the coffee beans yeah that's a really nice look I really like this because it's very warm in the midtones and the highlights and it's very pleasing, but you can see there's still like a green sort of, I'll add it to this. There's sort of a greenish hue in these shadows, um, which depending on what type of like film stock, it has kind of a film look to it. Um, I really, really like the look of that. That's really nice. You can see just how good that looks. Cool. So yeah, this is a the Cinematic V4 pack from Trion Digital. Again, this is just a great addition to all of their lug packs. Um, I'm a huge fan of their LUT packs in general. I love having as many tools as possible. So for me, having as many LUTs as I have, it's being able to go through and use them and customize them. And, and you could add two LUTs. So, I mean, you know, let's say you really like this and then you wanted to add like, I don't know, the Dr. Sleep one on top. Like, I mean, it's a little much, but you know, you can see you're adding a little more contrast and a little bit of a different look. You can stack those. There's so much you can do with LUTs. And again, Trium Digital just makes great ones. And I always love supporting them because supporting Film Riot uh, is very important to me because they've obviously been a really great company and, uh, you know, source of information. So anyway, guys, hope this was enjoyable. Again, awesome LUT pack. I totally recommend it if you haven't checked it out. And again, it's a great addition to the pack. It's also a great standalone pack. So if you have all of them, totally get it. If you don't have them, it's great to check out and definitely check out all the other ones. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys later.